Okay, so this is the second part of uh, my finish for pens, and this one involves epoxy, resin, and wood combination. So epoxy, epoxy resin is a little bit different than acrylic. It doesn't seem to be quite as hard as acrylic, so I like to put a finish on it. So this will end up having a CA finish on it, but a uh, little process in between. Now, this particular one was filled in. I had a little bit of a gap that uh, appeared in the wood while I was uh, turning this pen. And if you want to see that video, uh, just click right up here. But um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a little bit of dry sanding with the micro mesh. Um, get everything on here. There we go. Turn that off. Don't need that to see. Uh, so I'm going to do a little bit of dry sanding. Now, um, when do you do dry sanding? When do you do wet sanding? Well, you do dry sanding when uh, unprotected wood is involved, which in this case it is. And uh, we don't have a finish on the wood yet, so now it'd be dry sanding. So that's what I'm doing right now, just a little bit. Doesn't have to be too much. I just wanted to touch it up a little bit. Now, this actually has already been sanded down to 600 grit, but I'm gonna go a little finer on this. Probably the first four steps in the micro mesh, I think is all that I really need to do. And this is gonna be it. Now I'm at about 600 RPM. Uh, I've actually put it down on my second belt setting. My first uh, belt setting I had on earlier was 3,500 I was um, working on this. And when I go to the finish, I put it on the middle belt setting, which um, let's see here. I think that goes from 325 to 1700. So, all right, let's turn this off for a sec here. So it looks good. And then, like I said, I just, I just wanted to finish it up just a little bit, wipe it off a tiny bit. Now, because this is a uh, open wood here, I'm gonna put a little bit of a um, sanding sealer on it. And um, otherwise I, I wouldn't, but, um, and you probably could get away without it. I mean, you're gonna put a CA finish on it, so you probably can just go straight to CA finish if you want. Uh, but I, I like a little bit of the sanding sealer on the wood, just cause I think it, um, I think it helps. Uh, seal it up and then it gives it a little more of a firm base sort of a, helps firm out the wood a little bit because uh, some of this wood is a little punky it's it's a burl and um, is definitely a little bit punky so I put the lid back on this stuff here don't want this drying out on just a slow speed just to wipe that in. Now we'll turn it up to a little bit of higher speed. Go along. So at this point, um, once I get the sanding sealer on, I'm pretty much gonna follow my normal routine for CA. And um, as a result, I'm gonna change out to my CA bushings here so uh, I will cut out from you for a second while I go ahead and change those out but uh, that wood looks all real good right now it looks really nice okay so let me change those out and I will be right back with you okay so uh, back here so I'm gonna start out with um, and you can see that I got my CA bushings here and I'm gonna start out uh, slow speed turn it off and then have it come back on and I'll put a couple coats of thin CA on this. Okay so I'm gonna start out with a couple coats of thin CA and again I have it to my slowest speed possible. I just wipe it across, fill it all in, get that little piece off whatever that was. Speed it up a little bit, hit it with some spray. Now it takes a little bit of the CA accelerator. Don't have to use too much of it. Bring it back down to slow speed. 
I'm gonna get a new piece of blue towel is what I'm using here. So like I said, I'm gonna put two coats of thin CA on, which this, um, this cures pretty fast. Goes on relatively smooth. Now I like to use the thin CA because that soaks into the wood and um, that seems to make sense to me because that way the wood um, gets a nice solid finish to start with. Yeah, speed that up just a tiny bit. And again, I don't use much in the way of CA um, on my work here. I try not to use too much. Now that, that has already really a nice finish on it. Um, and it's because it started out everything so smooth and good. So we're going to move on to the thick, thicker or medium. And I'm using again, Bob Smith, uh, instant cure medium CA. And I could still get a side here that I could actually use here. All right. So it's low speed and I put the drops on actually on the rag and then wipe it across. I like that. And on my medium CA, I like to use the CA kicker that's in the aerosol bottle or the uh, pump spray bottle, I guess I should say. And I spray it onto the rag and just sort of lightly touch the bottom of, the, of my pen tubes and then slowly speed it up as I increase the pressure on them. And not too much pressure, don't take too much pressure. But all I want to do is just activate it. And again, like I said in the other video, uh, activation is, you know, pretty quick. I mean, just, just the fumes can help activate that. And if you start to get any type of uh, big lines in there, you, you might want to hit it with the micro mesh just to make your job easier towards the end there. But um, either way, I generally don't get too big of um, lines they use in this method. I just go across once and then wipe it. And again, I make sure it gets a good coat on there. Speed up a tiny bit here. And just barely touching it right now. As I'm speeding up, I'm just going to start increasing the pressure onto the pen blank. It never ends up being a, a real heavy pressure. I don't put a real heavy pressure on it. All right, and then back to the slow again and put another coat on. Now I do anywhere from um, four to six coats, depending. This one looks actually pretty good. Um, I may end up only using four coats on this one, if I can get my towel over correctly. And thick CA you got to be careful with because it can, the accelerator that's already on there is going to activate it as soon as you start putting it on there. So just be aware of that. And of course, be aware of the fact that your skin uh, sticks to CA glue rather quickly. So again, as I'm putting this on there, and you may be able to see it from this other camera, and yeah, I'll check and see in the video if we can, but um, it will actually start smoking the minute the towel gets close to it as it, as it cures it. All right, so let's see. And the accelerator rag can stay the same. That's got a pretty good little lump right there, but I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that alone for right now. And just continue one more. I think it's just one more coat is all I need on this. So. Slow speed again. And I'm gonna put one more coat of CA, flatten it out as much as I can. And again, this is the medium CA that I'm using. Two thin coats, and I think that's the fourth coat of medium CA, but I lose count, so we'll find out when we replay the video. Speeding up a little bit, just barely touching it with the cloth just to activate the CA. And now I'm speeding up and starting to apply 
Just a little bit more pressure to help smooth it out some. All right, that should be good. All right, so now I'm gonna take these off and put them back onto the metal pieces as I, because I'm gonna be sanding them and I don't wanna sand these CA uh, spacers because they'll, they'll get damaged pretty quick. So I'll be right back once I change them out again. All right, so now we're gonna continue on with our process. Now off camera, well, first I'll, I'll continue, I'll start the process here, but um, I'm gonna use my micro mesh and I'm gonna go through the whole bunch again. I'll put it to about 600, close to 800 RPM right here. And I'm gonna go through the whole process again, but this time I'm wet sanding um, on there because I do, I do have a finish now. So I'm gonna wet sand, build up a little bit of a slurry here on this. And now the whole idea of the wet sanding is to get everything flat and smooth. And that's, that's the idea here is what I'm trying to do across there. And the first one is my shaping sanding. Now off camera before this, um, I had to sand down because I use the um, CA bushings there. Uh, they allow CA to get on the ends of my blanks there, which uh, build up. And so you have to sort of sand them. Where did my paper towels go? There they are. Uh, you have to sand the ends to get that, uh, that CA off. So now all I'm doing is I'm looking for bright spots. I'm looking to make that, make sure that everything is sort of flat. And this one's gonna take a little bit of work here. I can see that. I'm gonna bring my speed up a little bit more. So I'm gonna probably speed up through this part here. All right, so sometimes a bright light across there helps you see what you need to see. And now I'm gonna move on to my next grit. And again, this is one that I'm still gonna take a little bit of time on uh, to get the, make sure that everything is smooth and looking good. You do have to be careful that you don't go through, so you don't wanna get too overzealous on your sanding. And if you do go through, uh, you pretty much have to just start the whole process all over again. And you want to let the machine do the work. I mean, you want to put apply pressure, but you don't want to put too much pressure on the thing. You want to get a nice even sanding across everything. You don't want to push your finger down and create a little divot there where your finger is at. So, and keep the pad moving. You don't want the pad to get hot or the plastic on the pen to get hot, either one. So that's another another advantage of doing the um, wet sanding is that it doesn't get, doesn't get as hot as it does on the dry sanding. All right, so this is all looking really good now. Loving that pearl. God, that pearl looks really good. Okay, so on to my next grit. And now I'm just gonna move along pretty quick, so I'll be quiet and just fast forward through this so that you don't see the whole thing. Oh, well, you'll see the whole thing, but you'll see it in a very abbreviated bit of time. Okay, so I finished my whole micro mesh process here. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use some Axe Sanding Paste. Or, I'm sorry, Axe Polishing Restoring Paste uh, on this. And I'll find a nice clean spot here. Put that on. And my dogs are probably gonna get loud right now because my son's home, so they tend to get rather boisterous. See? And I'll do a slower speed here.
All right, so I use the polishing paste because it's a much finer uh, paste than the sanding abrasive. And then finally, I just want to put a coat of polishing compound on it. And that's this stuff right here. And this is Marine Polish and Sealant. And um, I, I found this quite by accident, but uh, I've since I've, I've located this stuff and been trying it out, um, I like the end result. And again, always start at a slower speed, and I'm at like, three, I think mine is three something, 325 is the slowest it can go uh, at this point right here. And that's gonna wipe it on nice and neat, and then I'm gonna speed it up and let it um, dry a little bit. And then go ahead and uh, polish it off, or just buff it off, I should say. Now, I don't have a buffing set up here yet, but I will eventually, I'm sure. And I'm sure that at the end here, you could buff this a little better on some buffing wheels and really just make a, um, a gloss that just looks absolutely fabulous. This looks really good right now. So I'm loving the way this is looking right here. This, this one just looks fantastic. So I will send this on to my dragon pen and uh, show you the end result. Okay, so that's my second finish type for a pin blank that is part epoxy resin and part wood. And uh, it's pretty close to the, the all wood one using uh, the CA finish. And the reason for that is that the epoxy resin, it just doesn't seem as durable to me as acrylic uh, resin does. So that's the second part of this three part series. The next one is gonna be acrylic resin. And I love the way that this dragon pin come out. I think this is uh, just a, a beautiful pin. I'm really, really happy with this. So, stay tuned for part three of pen finishing. <laughs>